Once again, you're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. Anytime I have a fighter on, I like to do like my best Bruce, 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 Bruce Buster. <laughs> In the blue corner! <laughs> that Bruce Buffer. Frank Chopper! Whoa! Boom. That was impressive. Yeah, I, did. Hired. I had this guy, uh, Jeff the Administrator Peterson, and wow. that one rolled off the tongue really nicely. I like and it. And I didn't practice it at all. And he was like, Yeah, that was damn good. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Maybe, you know, I'm a shit fighter, but uh, I'm, maybe I have, a, <laughs> I have another calling in the ring. <laughs> it would be great. <laughs> so we're talking with Frank uh, today. He's, uh, like I said in the first uh, in the segment, he's. Um, He's an MMA fighter, Muay Thai fighter, Jiu-Jitsu fighter. He's a, a martial arts instructor. Um, but along the way, after getting fired from Best Buy and a couple other bumps, he uh, he started his own um, nutrition counseling company called Evergreen Nutrition Counseling. Boom. Nailed it. And one of the things that, that I love to talk to business owners about is the name that they choose mm-hmm. and why. Because sometimes it's just random. You know, it's like number one pizza or, right. you know kind of Chinese food or whatever. That doesn't really mean a lot, but the term evergreen itself yeah. indicates like long-term, like this is, these are, these are tried and, and vetted practices Yeah, and, and we're going to be around versus, I mean, you see a lot of, you see one, a lot of fighters come and go. You see a lot of diets come and go. Yeah. Uh, nutrition is just like all over the place um, with people. So why why the term evergreen? Why did that become your name? So um, like we talk a lot about fighters, but I work with a lot of non-fighters as well, just like general um, populations. As, as for lack of a better term, I like I'm not mean you know, to like trying to talk down on, but like whatever. I got the not, athlete shirt on. Boom! I'm really certified athlete. But uh, like you said, I mean, there's a lot of like fad, like BS diets, like, oh, we're doing keto. We're doing 36 hours fast every day. We're doing like this and that. Probably people only eating like egg corns on weekends. Like, I don't know. There's like always stuff. And then you see like these, a lot of people on YouTube doing like videos. There's like these big jacked guys that are like most likely doing some steroids and they talk about it openly, but like. We call that the bomba. Boom. <laughs> That's sauce. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so like they're always talking about like, oh, this, this is the diet. This is the thing. But it's like, that's not what they did to get like that. Mm-hmm. They're doing that to sell a bunch of programs right. and they're going to say only eat fat and protein and don't eat any carbs. And then in 18 months, it's like a totally different thing that they're talking about. And it's like, they're just going to the next thing that's going to get the most amount of clicks and the most amount of like whatever's hot at the time. And yeah, evergreen is like, this is just, it's the same thing. It always has been the same thing. It always will be is like, things aren't changing. It's just getting yourself to have like good habits and then sustaining them over long periods of time. And the other thing that, that stood out to me is that you had a fight. I can't remember what it was. When was your last cage Fury fight? That was in April. April. Oh, wow. I remember asking like, you know, what's what your camp like or whatever we, we knew were on the show with my brother and I and you were like I just I, I don't change anything I'm just always ready so yeah you it's just like a it's more of a lifestyle for you than like this is something we're going to do for eight weeks and then, right and then I'm back to eating hot dogs and drinking beer right and, and like I get my next my next potential contract correct yeah and I mean like I'll enjoy like the pizzas and the burgers and stuff like that it's just it the, the whole thing because like I went through a period of this as well, but like, it's trying to build a healthy relationship with food, you know? So like there was, again, a lot of people do this and myself included at a certain point in time was like, okay, I need to drop some weight, but all right, I'm going to eat this pizza, but then I'm not going to eat for 12 hours after that. And then in six hours, you're like, all right, one cookie's fine, but I'm not going to eat for 13 hours. And it's just like, this just like binging fasting thing. That's just like, it, it just doesn't work. You know what I mean? Like, I feel a lot of people struggle with that, but yeah, having a good relationship with food is, is the thing. So like I eat 85, 90% of the time healthy, but if like something pop up, pops up at somebody's birthday, if it's whatever we're going out, I don't mind having that thing, that snack, that pizza, that dessert, whatever, because it's everything's consistency, consistency, right. not like very focus for short periods of time and then fall off the rails like you were saying it's right. just like what can what is the most sustainable thing 
that I can do. And that's it. And that's the key. I think that's the key word in Evergreen. It's like, it's sustainable. Yeah. You know, this is, this is something that, that can go on and on and on. Um, did I mention to you the, it, it was a um, Matthew McConaughey episode with Joe Rogan, where he was talking about how he, how he cut weight. For one of oh, those, for one of the movies, machinist. Where he was just like, <sighs> yeah, he was eating nothing. But, but he said he started, he did the arc was like, so long that it was never taxing on him where he just like mm. slowly eliminated things little by little gotcha. and started like a year out and then the same on the way back up it's not like once they were done he was like okay burgers and hot dogs every day right. he had to arch back up that's that's smart but he was he, he said it was smart and he said you know it was not taxing on his system he did not feel you know he wasn't fatigued he didn't right. feel he wasn't starting to see like hallucinate and anything yeah. like that like he said everything felt very normal if you do it in a sustainable fashion i think the the, the crazy peaks and you know my my brother experienced this firsthand i got to give him a little shout out this is an embarrassing story but sorry dude i know you were talking shit about me last week on the show <laughs> Last week we we did the Sunday show, but I was on top of a mountain and I couldn't okay. yeah, I couldn't get down. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right, time. couldn't get down in enough time, and uh, and and they did it without me. And I, I heard there was there was some there was talk some shit. Um, but he was he was a wrestler in middle and high school, and he cut weight for for a match. He made weight, and he went to dinner. I think with like my parents. He was like seventeen at the time. And then his girl called and she was like, I want to go out. And he was like, yeah, I could eat again. Sure. And he ate again and he's driving home and just like his body tanked. Oh, and he sure. fell asleep driving and wrapped his car around a freaking light post. Oh, Christ. Dislocated his hip to get to wrestle for a while. But oh, he came back. Um, <laughs> but but like, you know, I got to see like firsthand how how those crazy um, weight cuts can affect you. Yeah. So it seems like what you're talking about would, would definitely avoid a situation like that for anybody that's looking, whether you're a high school wrestler, an aspiring fighter, or just somebody that's looking to, to get in shape. Uh, you're not going to wrap your car around a light post because of what Frank told you to do. Boom. I'm saving lives <laughs> out here, really. Well, so, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to point out is like, you know, there, there's, there's all this talk about how to respond to uh, to the threat of COVID. Mm -hmm. And you don't hear a lot of people saying, really, be fucking healthy. Yeah. You know, I think the stats right now is like 78% of people that are in ICU beds are obese. Like it's a major yeah. contributor. <laughs> like you said, it doesn't mean you have to skip all the things that you enjoy, but you do have to have a balanced, healthy relationship right. with food. Yeah. And, I, and that's the thing. It's a lot of like, when people want to go on their diets, like I've had friends who like their moms like, oh yeah, I'm only in 500 calories a day. And they do that for a month and they lose 25 pounds. And then they have like that one cheat day and then it just ramps all the way back the other way. And it's like, then they're just gorging and gorging and gorging. And like, it's the classic thing. It's like, I lose and then I gain back more than I lost because it's like, you're just, you're wrapping almost your whole identity around like, this is what I'm doing. And if any chink in that armor prevent presents itself you just blow apart completely and like i run a strength program out of a wrestling club so i see a lot of these kids that are like i'm trying to like convince them not to cut weight because i see friends were like they wrestle and their three brothers didn't wrestle and all their brothers are six foot three and they're like five foot seven and it's like that's not an accident that's like that it's just it's not yeah. you know it's like and i was there wrestling in high school too where kids don't eat for like a day and a half. They make weight. They go have like four happy meals from McDonald's and they're like, Oh, okay. Now I got to run seven miles and then go <laughs> don't eat for the next day. And then they weigh in. It's like, that is not, you're just wrecking your body. Right. You're going like right. super high insulin. Then you're going crashing into nothing. And you're just like, everything's just a roller coaster. Which also is not good for you if you're trying to build a solid immune system. Right. Or right. And back to that, like the overweight, the yeah. COVID thing is like, that's really just a relationship with food thing. And like, that's what I do again with like non athletes, people not competing is like, okay, tell me everything you do. What do you sleep? Like, how's your sleep? What's your water? What's your work? Like, what's your workout? Like, what's your food? Like, because again, it's not going to, everybody knows, okay, eat a carrot. That's like, but doing it is the hard part. So like, yeah. see like all those things. And it's like, okay, there's probably like 20 things in here that we can fix 
but we're going to go with like three and we're going to go with the three easiest and we're going to knock those out and we're going to do another three and we're just going to build momentum. And then it's like, you turn around in seven, eight months and you're like, huh, I lost 30 pounds. And that wasn't even like, I wasn't even paying attention to it. I was just fixing these little things, hitting small markers. And then you step on the scale and you're like, oh, okay. Those little things made a difference. Not I'm not eating gluten or I'm cutting out all carbs or I'm not eating any meat or I'm eating all meat or like whatever, whatever it is, you know, it's like just having good, healthy habits that you can do consistently. And again, I have a lady that probably like the longest client that I have, cause I've only been running this for about a year and a half. I've had her for 14 months. So like the vast majority of it. And, you know, she'd be like, I don't want to be, I don't want to upset you, but my friend's birthday party is next weekend and I really want to have a drink. I'm like, dude, you literally haven't missed anything. You haven't been off track in like three months. Right. Go, go. go. you're going to be fine. Yeah. And you're going to check your weight the next day and go, Oh my God. And then you're going to check it the next day and be like, Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. And it's like, not, it's like understanding that a, a cheat day or an earned meal or whatever you want to call it is not like the end of the world. You hit that and then you go and then you just keep going. Like I said, back, back to the consistency. Right. It's like jujitsu. Yeah. But we'll right. get to that later. So. All right. We're going to take another break, everybody. Hang tight. We'll see you in just a few. All right, guys. Welcome back. Again, if you're just tuning in, the Entrepreneurial Well. I'm your host, Jeremiah Frox. Today, here with Frank Chopper Wells. Pro fighter. Also uh, has his own nutrition counseling company called Evergreen Nutritional Counseling. Nailed it. You know, Almost. I got to set it yeah. up. I'm like, I'm going to fuck it up if I just start with Evergreen. It's all good. <laughs> I've done that before where I completely make up business names for people and they're just like, That's fine. no, man. But like one guy, his, I can't even remember, but I just kept calling his something like Brooklyn something or other. And he's like, it, there's Brooklyn's not in the name. And I was like, <laughs> I was like What's in Brooklyn, right? And he was like, yeah, you got that part right. So, um, so talking about, uh, you know, nutrition, how it, how it applies to athletes um, and, and weight cuts and how that, you know, you could lose money that way, but also just the general, the general public, you know, old fucks like me who just trying to keep it, the dream alive um, and stay in shape. Um, but a lot of what you said too, uh, as you, you mentioned sleep, you know, you, you talked about sustainability, sleep, like what are all your habits? These are the things that I hear like high performing like entrepreneurs and business people talk yeah. about too like shout out to my guy dr lance not he's one of the the um uh fit personal or, <laughs> i'm gonna fuck your title up too lance <laughs> physical therapist okay who's got a phd yeah. he's got a number of clinics in he's based out of medford okay um and his his companies are called breakthrough um he's been on the show a couple times great dude you know, same similar focus where he started in in uh, people's wellness, owned his own businesses, and real. So, uh, as you're saying, people coming to you that are like, yeah. like I'm, uh, that, that. There's one thing that really I think prohibits me from like getting to the the, the next level that I want to get is like I don't sleep. I sleep like five five hours and a half. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, you, you could even like expand into that. Do you, are you getting people, um, from that background that are like, Oh yeah. I'm just like a business person. I work so hard and I just like, I'm not physically where I want to be. Yeah. There, there's, there's a girl says it's actually one that was my longest client now. And she was like, I'm not going to say her name, but if she listens, she'll know who it is. Um, she was like, so she's a lawyer. So very like, high stress, like, yeah. you know, yeah, just difficult environment. So it's also like, it's the culture of the, of like lawyers, they go out and they drink after work, but she's also, um, so she played basketball uh, at Yale. So like high level basketball player, very smart. Um, and then she started competing in Muay Thai. When I went and looked at her, she's only been competing for like, including COVID where she didn't get to fight for over a year. I mean, she's only been competing for about three, three and a half years. And she's stacked up like 26 fights. Like she just, just mows through them one after another. But, um, so she's a lawyer. And a Muay Thai fight. Yeah. Uh, uh, not uh, want to be across yeah. the courtroom. For you know, she's, she's all over, but, uh, 
uh, yeah, she would, it's funny too, because she was like the easiest because I'm like, hey, what's like your schedule like? And three minutes later, I had an email of everything blocked out. She does every day of the week. I was like, this is awesome. Because most fighters, including myself, are like quite unorganized and like, oh, I'll figure out my schedule is when I'm doing the things and then let you know what I have, what happened at that time. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a lot of like, my first run is at 6 a.m. and I train until 9 a.m. and then I work from like 12 to five and I train from six to nine and I come home and I work from like 10 30 to 1 a.m. And then I get up at five o'clock. I'm like, we got to fix that. We got like, <laughs> to do. And it was a fortunate time that was during Corona stuff. So she wasn't able to, and work was kind of like, cause they weren't doing like in person, um, I don't know what they're called trials, I guess. But uh, so she's able to correct the sleep a little bit, but that's like, that was like a real big thing. It's like, you have, you're working out three, sometimes four. Negations and doing all the pre-work and kind of like a good, such a high level yeah. that like we got to, find time to rest if we can like find a nap in the middle of the day if we can get you like throwing something from the end of your day and squeeze it in the middle that we're like you're multitasking just so we can try to get another hour hour and a half of sleep because like it was realistically like four sometimes five hours a night she's like 35 36 so like metabolism metabolism is slowing down a little bit and so like you need every single advantage that you get you can get to preserve that lean muscle tissue it's so like sleep matters stress matters how you're eating matters like there's a lot of factors into it um so it's, I, it's funny because people focus on diet they're like yeah everybody's like i need to diet and do sit-ups and i'm like unfortunately that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a lot more it's a lot to more. it and i didn't realize until like really get like running multiple businesses how, right. how much stress plays into it yeah um because it just throws your body kind of all kilter but you also make poor decisions when you're right. stressed yeah so it's not even like a cheat it's just like a fuck it you know yeah and well, then uh sleep the same way when you're when you're really tired and exhausted you just not your body's not firing the same way and you're just like you know what i'm gonna have donuts right now. yeah just- yeah and i said like you're it's just what's easiest to most convenient and it's like okay i just go grab this boom grab it and then again it's like while you're at the gas station, while you're doing this, you're doing that, you're like not planning really anything. And that's the idea is like, that's what helps a lot of people too, is like not having like, okay, I eat eggs at 12 and I eat chicken at four and this, whatever. It's like having a general sense and some principles to work around. And then like making sure you have a plan and fit those principles into the meals that you're having. And so it's not like six o'clock and you're like, what am I going to eat? And I was like, no, you have a pretty good idea and like things that'll fit into what you should be eating. And accessibility. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, let's, yeah. So like some people do like the meal prep stuff. I don't even do that, but it's like, just have the ingredients at home, keep the process crap out of your house. Mm -hmm. So it becomes more inconvenient to go get the crap than it is just to throw some vegetables and saute them, throw them up and okay, that wasn't so bad. And then what's your, what's your opinion on naps? Cause I like, I like naps. Big nap guy. Big nap guy. Big nap guy. Yeah. So I mean like needing naps generally means you didn't sleep enough, but like if you can fit the naps in, if you're not sleeping for whatever reason, right. Whether it's you're just struggling to sleep or like your schedule doesn't fit it so well and you have the time, like definitely get to sleep. And I mean, I'm sure you feel it too. Like you're dragging ass. You take okay. a 20 minute nap and you're like, all right, let's go. We're going to knock out the rest of the day. Yeah. and feel good. I've done that as well. I've heard uh, a couple trainers say there's no such thing as overtraining. There's under resting. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's no such thing as overtraining, but certainly it happens a lot quicker when you're under resting, right. you know, like there's even myself, I had like my set schedule and I'm like, man, this is a lot. I'm probably overworking myself. And then like went to a physical therapist where they do like cryo, they do chiropractor, they do acupuncture. I go to like a banya where they have like the sauna and the cold plunge. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I feel pretty good. And I'm doing the same things. I just added some recovery in and right. they said, make sure the sleep's right. And you're like, hmm, all right, maybe 
I wasn't doing too much. I just was not doing enough on the other end of it to kind of like help keep the side afloat, yeah. you know? So what are some other forms of recovery? You know, you mentioned a couple besides just rest and diet. Yeah. For, um, for you know, high, like for high performers, whether it's after or just business people and then just like firing on all pistons. Yeah. I mean, so like, let's like say the naps are big doing like, um, if, so for physical things, again, it's like doing the active recovery, like the ice baths going for, even just for walks on an off day, just to get your blood flowing, to get your muscles moving, um, without straining them. Um, like that low intensity exercise, um, even just doing like, like mentally relaxing things are going to help your body just kind of like, cause if you're, if we're sitting in a chair now, but my mind is like on point, it's like fire and heart. So like, that's still, I'm not relaxing. I'm not resting the way that I would be if I was actually trying to. So like, I'm a big, like, especially fight camp time, but big, like take a warm bath, have some tea, play some nice, like easy music. And then maybe like a quick, And then go to bed during the screens right before that, like tracking much, like just keeping at a low RPM. I feel like that is super helpful, especially people that are like the quick walks, the bath, stuff like that at the end of the day can just kind of like, just bring everything down. But you're talking about actively like turning your mind down and not trying to figure Correct. out. I think they're both in conjunction. The world and everything. Because yeah. like you said, you could be in that bath with the tea and the music but if you're like worrying about a bunch of shit you guys close but you're just like i got this i got that like you're not you're you're diminishing your recovery correct like it's better than nothing right but yeah it could be way better if you like just tuned it all down because i'm big on that too i go to lay down and i'm like yeah i didn't text that guy i gotta do this oh, i didn't do that i forgot about that all, all right, right. Like, about, like all the yeah. business owners man they lay down yeah. and they're like you know, especially the last year and a half, you know, where's the money going to come from? Where's yeah. the staff going to come from? And, um, I, you know, it's, that's been hard for me, but I've figured out my own little ways to do that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's huge where you can just like that ability to let it go mm -hmm. and just reduce the potential for the stress and the lack yeah. of sleep. Because even like you said, if you try to sleep. Yeah. And you'll, you'll come back better. Like when you do have to think about those things, I feel like you're sharper. You're not getting overwhelmed with these 15 yeah. things. You're just kind of like, it's your rest round. You know what I mean? You come back in just oh, like a little bit. Stronger. Or you could just do jujitsu for an hour and you Boom. can get it all. Because yes. <laughs> that's some nice meditation. Motherfucker's trying to choke you and all of a sudden, whatever you worried about. Yeah. Yeah. I remember like, doesn't matter anymore. I, I'm not a big runner, but I like. Yeah. you get your mind cleared out again i could have rounds right they, can, I, can i breathe like uh, gregor's right before interviewing rodrigo oh no yeah i got okay. choked, on, choked unconscious how'd that feel that great it's Interesting. Euphoric. i've been close but i've never actually gone I, me too and i went totally out it was funny because it wasn't even we were just like kind of flow roll and he got on my back across collar and he started to get deeper and deeper i had my hand or raise my foot to tap and it never, never went down and it's so funny because like you just like an out-of-body experience for those of you who haven't gotten choked unconscious it's a blood choke so right it's relatively safe um you you like i went to a concert i was like mm. in a club with like loud music interesting and then rodrigo is like in front of me and i'm like that's so odd that he's here too <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like my brother are you okay are you okay and i'm like and then I, my first thought was, oh, fuck, I fainted. Like, because my third, you know, talk about overtraining, it was my third class that day. Okay. 7, 10, and noon. Okay. And it was like one fifteen, So I've been going, and it was hot and everything. And I'm like, I finally hit that old man point where I just, like, fainted because I was training too much. And then he said something about not tapping. And when I realized that 
I, I got choked out. I just started dying laughing. And I woke up and I felt um, like, talk about a power nap. Right. I was out for 10 seconds. Felt and good. I felt like I slept for two hours. And I was like, is there still time in the round? And they were like, yeah, I'm like, let's go. And they're like, what? And Do I'm, it again. I felt amazing after that. And I was asleep for 10 seconds, but it was deep sleep. Like, right, deep, the deepest. Like, I, went, like, I went to the other side. <laughs> it was wild. It was wild. All right, we're going to take one more quick break. We'll be back in cool. just a minute, everybody. Hang tight. All right, everybody. Welcome right back. Last round. Ding, ding, ding with Frank Chubber. Whoa! It's coming to you live from Hensel Gracie headquarters, 30th Street, Midtown, Manhattan. So the pressing question, why do they call you Chopper? <laughs> so we got a good, one, a good reason, a bad reason, and they both happen within 30 seconds of each other. Um, first ever kickboxing fight, the, I was fighting like a shorter boxer. So the plan was like kick his legs, kick his body, get him reaching, get his guard down, and then we're gonna kick up high. And the first thing I did, I, that's what the game plan was in the back. And then right before the fight starts, my coach is like right behind me. He's going, be fucking violent, be violent. I'm like, be violent. And I touched gloves. I threw a head kick and it sailed right over his head and I fell my ass. And my coach likes to over-exaggerate it and say I spun around like a helicopter. And he proceeded to just post pictures of helicopters on my Facebook page for like three weeks straight every day. So that's what the official credit is. Um, same fight, got back up, literally threw one leg kick on the outside, one leg kick on the inside. I threw a push kick, and then I kicked him in the head and knocked him out, which is literally exactly what he said to do from the beginning. Um, and then other people are saying, because I chopped his head off, and that they saw like a tooth in, his, in my shin guard, which isn't true, but, you know, can't let the truth get in the way of a good story. Um, you're, you're yeah. You've been associated with some crazy fights. The one that you fought, the guy lost his finger. Yeah, that I wasn't in that fight. No, no, that was the that same was like, night though. Yeah, it was like just quite odd. Fights later, and I was like, yeah, they were right. literally like, can everybody look under their seats and see if you can see this guy's finger? Yeah, and that was weird. Cause so I came out of the locker room and I'm watching a fight happen, and I see the guy sit down on the stool, and then a few minutes later I see a guy get wheeled out on the gurney, and I never heard the crowd pop. I never heard anything like, yeah, it was, no, it was very so strange. So weird. And then I, I'm walking up to like where my friends and family are. Um, and I see the ref to ref of my fight crawl out from underneath the cage with a flashlight on. I'm like, what is happening? And someone's like, that dude lost his finger. And I'm like, what? And it ended up being in his glove. glove. It folded back yeah. underneath the glove wow. somehow. I don't know how, but uh, he ended up fighting like a couple weeks ago. He lost, but he is fighting again. Um, and those Russians, he's a, a psychotic Russian like they all are. Were, Emotionless. Yeah. So that, and then there's a picture the next day of like the stitches of his hand together. And they like interviewed him, I guess, at the hospital. And they were like, uh, he, or he goes, man, I was pissed too. I was pissed the doctor stopped it because I felt that guy was fading. I was going to get him out of there in the yeah, third yeah. round. I'm like, what? I go, if, if you ever like touched a hot stove, how that feels? And that's like with your skin. Imagine just taking like your bare bone and then slamming it off of somebody's head as hard as you could. It's like that is just unbelievable. They're, like they're different. They're different breeds. Yeah. Different breeds. Um, so I wanted to ask you um, how martial arts training, like particularly, I think jujitsu, because it's it's so strategic. You were talking mm -hmm. about that fight and how you had a game plan. How has training impacted your approach to running your business? Um, so, I mean, I think like a big thing that, um, that uh, I got from Mike Jaramillo too, because he always just talks about like changing angles, right? Like if you're meeting resistance, you don't just drive into the resistance and then hope the resistance gets tired. It's like we change angles, we come high, we come to the side. So like, if things for whatever reason aren't working or like not going as they're supposed to, then just kind of like trying to look at it from another perspective, be like, how can it work? That's another, like, I kind of took it as well from a, a book that I was listening to recently, but it was like, don't think I can't afford this thing. How can I afford this? And then like, that just opens your mind up to the possibility. So it's not like I can't get this done it's like, okay, that way is not working. How can I get this done? 
It's like, I'm not going to push through this guy's frames. It's like, okay, let's pop up and release them. And now we can drive forward. Let's get to the side where he's not as strong, get to his weak side. Now we can drive forward, you know? So just like understanding that resistance doesn't shut you down. It actually opens up different options, different pathways, you know? So like, yeah, you meet resistance, change what you're doing. You don't, you don't like, if you don't like the way things look, change the way you look at the things. And then it works out eventually so far. So good. Amazing. And, and for like the people that don't train and don't understand or the people that train at a place that doesn't emphasize this. I mean, I don't know if you were here the morning, Mike was talking about it's, it's chess, not backgammon because they play a lot of backgammon here. Okay. You know, with, yeah. someone was like, you know, Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Just like, backgammon. It's way too simple. Yeah. Essentially. And, and, and there's like, you just take chances. Or you just roll the dice and see what happens. Dice, and he was like, that's not what training is. Right. It's, it's very, that's wild. it's very strategic. Um, it's always planned and you have to have a backup for your backup. For yeah. Your backup. And I, you know, that that's been a, a huge lesson for me in terms of business, um, because when you look at it, when you look at it as a sum zero game, then, then you really do diminish your opportunities. <laughs> and like what you're talking about, which explains so well, is just like figure out a different way to, yeah. to approach it and, and find some uh, find some some other and potentially better better solutions for sure more opportunities um you you're very active on social media um for both sure. your business and for um and for your your fights you got a fight coming up yes. october 2nd october 2nd in philly or atlantic city yeah it's like just outside of philly it's parks casino but okay. philly is just easier to say because it's close by and that's uh it's cage fury, cage fury as well correct yeah um and where would they you would see that streaming last time we'll, um we'll so they some will be on facebook the other rest are on uh ufc fight pass okay um and then if people are interested in reaching out to you for instruction in martial arts counseling and nutrition where's the yes. best place way to get in touch with you so currently my regular instagram i cannot log into it and that's usually tank jitsu but hold off on that for now that was the other question why yeah. tank let uh it was literally like made up on the spot okay i wish i had a better story yeah it was work, like you gotta work on that you gotta come up with because the trucker story is great yeah it was just like uh, i was like 17 18 i couldn't drive no i was 17 and i couldn't drive to these late jujitsu practices because i would be out past my provisional license so this guy that i used to train with he was like he was like 26 at the time he had like a broken down truck where he had to like I had to get in and he had to like lift the door up to put it in. And we paid our instructor in like Modelo and it was just like a very weird thing. And he made me make a Twitter. So I had to make a name on the spot and I was like, tank jitsu. And then that was it. That was 17 year old Frank. All right. So That's you it. You got to work on that. Story. Yeah. Not as cool. Um, so Instagram is tank jitsu. yes, be back up soon. Um, Evergreen nutrition counseling on Facebook same thing on Instagram and I'm there all the time. So and you, and jump. Facebook is just Frank Wells, right? You yeah. So I have, a, I have Frank Marshall Wells is my personal. And then yeah, the evergreen nutrition counseling as the, uh, as the business one. So Instagram and Facebook for evergreen is a good way to contact Yes, sir. You, you yeah. Got, and my email's attached on there. Nice. So if you're, you know, athletic, looking to get a better shape, just want to get a better shape or best case scenario, I think you're a high uh, performing business person that needs to be in shape to continue to perform <laughs> high. Um, you know, Frank's a, Frank's a great guy, uh, first and foremost. Um, Thanks, and, man. And he's in it for the long haul, and you have to be too if you want to succeed. So thank you, brother. Well, appreciate so it, awesome. man. I'm glad we really Heck got yeah. to do this. Glad, glad we got to do it here in RGA. Thank you, Hinzo. And uh, thank all of you. Really uh, for great to see you all for, tu for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next week, everybody. Have a great weekend. Peace out. Boom.